Hello everyone and welcome back. Today's video is focusing on furlings once again, but this time we're going to be making them even more stronger and annoying compared to last time. These are one of the core strength to Warlock Strand users, and compared to say Arc Souls, furlings can do a lot of damage in a short time frame without the user needing to do a lot. With a threat of evolution increasing the duration and strength of threadlings, I thought, what would happen if we used Variety's Broward build as well? Well, you get Threadling nukes instead. With the power of Death Throws and Thread of Evolution, your Threadlings of any type are going to go hard on everything, no matter the level difference. Increased damage, fast ability regen, easy to use Threadling creation, and the fun as hell mechanics, this Threadling build may make doing harder endgame content a lot easier without even lifting a finger on your end. So to start, you're going to want to have Weaver's Call, where Castle and Griff will produce free Threadlings and deploy any Threadlings on you. You'll then want a Mind Spun Invocation to enhance your grenade, which will be Threading Grenades. Consuming your grenade will generate 5 perch Threadlings. The entirety of the build is going to be focusing on creating Threadlings on the fly, which should be very easy to do with how simple the Warlord's kit is. Not only are our grenades going to create Threadlings, but also our Rifts and weapons will be creating them as well, and all of them will benefit from this exotic effect once in action. The simpleness of the kit allows players to have more freedom when it comes down to the mods and even weapons being used, since you're not being tied down just to one method alone. Your fragments should be the following. Thread of Rebirth allows stun weapons a chance to create friendly and kill. Thread of Isolation, landing rapid positioning hits amid a severing burst from targets. Thread of Generation allows stun based damage to generate grenade energy. And Thread of Evolution allows Threadling to travel further and deal additional damage. The Thread of Evolution and Generation are two fragments that are going to play a big part within how the build can function for long, as being able to get your grenades up quickly and having an enhanced Thread things will make using the build a whole lot more consistent. Except from that, Thread of Rebirth is another fragment that will have high importance for those who don't have the Threadling perk on the strand weapon. Each kill with a strand weapon will create Threadlings on kill, which will work with varieties as well. So with how the build is designed, you can have an army of threadings at your disposal without needing to put a lot of effort. For the mods and stats section, you're going to need to have a lot of grenade based mods just so we can make full use of our grenades. However, as we are using Variety's Brow, which will grant us grenade energy on kills, the stats and mods required can be hampered down if you desire a different mod to be used compared to what's currently shown. I have a discipline stat of tier 10 just so that our passive grenade regen is viable when in and out of action. However, I would advise you to build around the tier 7 to 10 ranges as the main go to range when focusing on the stat alone. This is because with the number of grenades mods available and the exotic at hand, you don't need to go fully max discipline unless you have the armor set to spare. From this, you'll then want to have two grenade kickstart mods and two bomber mods. As mentioned before, we don't need to have a lot of mods around this area if you're using Variety's Brow as the main exotic. A tier 10 discipline stat with Fed of Generation, Variety's Brow, and the given grenades mod will have the grenade uptime of the build so high that even when you use your first grenade, you'll be guaranteed to have a full charge straight after as long as your armor charges are available. In terms of armor charges, charged up and stacks and stack is going to be giving you a plus one to charge stacks, so you'll overall get four charges when active. Next, you're going to want to have the firepower mod so your grenades can produce orbs of power on kills, and then the strand cipher mod for producing orbs of power via strand weapons. And lastly, we have the Ashes Assets times 2 mods so we can get our suit back quickly. These are the main core mods that will sustain the usability of the build throughout your play. And as shown, it's honestly not a lot. You will be left with a few extra slots left open which I would advise you to slot whatever you feel is necessary. For example, I added on the Strand Surge mod for a 25% weapon buff to Strand Weapons, Recuperation mod so we can replenish health the moment we collect an orb of power, and time dilation mod for extending the effects of decay and mods. This gives us a nice all round fit for the build. However, the surge mods and energy regen mods will be clashing with each other upon being used, so you will need to keep an eye out for this. Once all the mods are covered, you should be good with grenade regeneration for the build. From here, resilience can be tier 6 to 10 depending on your mod space and how much space you have left over. While well, recovery is going to be at least tier 8 to 10 out of the bag, so that we can utilize our Weaver's Call aspect straight away. Now, lastly, the weapons being used will be Strand, and I've managed to get my hands on a brand new sidearm called Final Warning, which was recommended to me by a fellow subscriber, so thank you for that. 
At first, I was going to use a strand weapon such as Quicksilver with his catalyst, as that works out really well with strand builds in general. However, a final warming felt like it hit the right spots in terms of getting death throws out quickly for a variety's brow. As final warning can lock onto multiple targets at once and fire at them, I found that this was useful for building up death throws without needing to stop and take shots at a target one by one. It may not kill all targets at once, but that's fine, as it will at least weaken them and allow us to easily refresh a buff before it goes out. You'll be surprised as to how well this works out for varieties, as usually an AR or SMG with a high magazine size would usually do the trick. But the side on with the build allows users to bypass that and just go straight to building up your stacks as long as you point and aim in the right direction. Of course, if you can get a legendary with a hatching built into it, that would make the build even more better in the long run, such as my circular logic with Envious Assassin and Hatchling. This is going to be a must have for those who want to dive deep in the build even more. So if you're familiar with the base Threadlings builds that pretty much everyone have done, then this build here is basically a upgrade to just that. The idea that you could produce these miniature heat seeking worms to track down your target and cause mass damage, not seen since Void and Arc 3.0, is always fun to experience. Although I did mention last time their bare similarity to Void with his AoE effect and spread, I think that now with Riley's added to the mix, it now feels similar to Arc and how his damage can escalate and spread in a short duration. In many ways, this is going to be huge in the long run for Threading builds, as you'll be able to use your Threadlings one after another in all forms. And with their numbers and strength, this means that you can overwhelm some high tier enemies you face. Endgame content could see a rise in threatening users who like to swarm the field and take down everything nearby them, similar to how stasis can shut down an area if well placed. On top of that, the strand secondary effect is going to make wanting to take such a build in the endgame a lot more sought after, with things like unraveling rounds doing additional damage, or sever which reduces their output damage. All of this, combined with your weapon of choice, will offer players a great time with Strand, and if you have been feeling hesitant on them, then this should push you into the right direction. Now the only issue with the build, which is common with most builds related to varieties, is the duration and stats required to make the build effective. Most content when using the build can be pulled just fine, with all the specs in motion, but once you start hitting tougher content with tougher enemies, getting the stacks and then retaining it is quite an effort at times. This does not mean that the build can only be used for selected content, but it does require you to think ahead with weapon usage and when the best time to use your Threadlings. Except from that, you'll get your Threadlings army as deserved. But what do you think? So there we have it, I hope you all enjoyed the build breakdown. If you have any thoughts on content shared then please leave a comment below, while at the same time if you enjoy the content and want more of these videos in the future, then leave a like and sub on here. I will leave a dim link for the build. I if you want more stuff like this, then I have players available covering all types of builds you desire. It was great sharing today's video with you all, and I hope to see you all again soon.